Hey there friends, welcome back. It's me, my name is Liz, my company is Hello from Liz Matthews, and I am excited to spend some time with you today after far too much time away. And to tell you how rusty I am, I just recorded 20 minutes of this video, had a coughing fit, went to hit pause and accidentally deleted the whole thing. So here we go again, I need to get better at this. I tell you what, it's hard when you've been away for so long and there have been so many things that have gone on, it's hard to know how to start again, if I'm being totally honest. And boy, have there been things that have gone on. I haven't sat down to have a proper chat with you guys in um, a month and a half, maybe more. It was before Expo. Now I did come on and do a special edition video with my mom, Kathy Barrick, where we showed you our new Expo releases, but that's not really chit chat and you know, filling you in on all the haps. That was purely business. So a lot has happened uh, professionally, personally, it just, it's been busy. I was watching one of um, Jacob's videos recently and he said it's kind of been like an avalanche lately and I think he hit the nail on the head. It has been crazy. You guys saw that my mom moved nearby. She's about 10 minutes from us now, which I absolutely love, and I've loved getting her settled so close. My dad, on the other hand, is about to move states, so he has already purchased a house in West Virginia, but we have been working really hard on fixing up his current house to go on the market this weekend. Uh, there's been a lot of like, laborious jobs, like a kitchen remodel, <laughs> putting in new garage doors, mulching around an entire house. It's just, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. And I am so grateful that I have had the time and been able to help everybody with these things, but it's keeping me busy because on top of all that, we also have the business stuff, which includes Expo, which happened at the end of August and my very first teaching event, which happened in Missouri in the middle of September. It was fantastic and I can't wait to tell you all about it. But for now, let me just tell you, grab a drink, grab some stitching. This is going to be a long one. I am surrounded by things that I want to share with you, to show you, to talk with you about. Um, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day here in Maryland. The weather is perfect, so the windows are open. If you hear anything, cars, dogs, whatever, please just go with the flow. I am enjoying the fresh air, although it did cause me to have that allergic coughing fit not long ago. We're gonna hope that doesn't happen again. I am prepared and I will not hit stop, as you guys know. I don't edit videos. There's only so much I can take on and editing videos is not one of them. So um, here we go. Let's rewind to Expo. <clears throat> Shall we? <laughs> Let's rewind to Expo. It was, it was fantastic. It is a virtual needlework show, which by now you have absolutely heard about since it was over a month ago. Um, right time it was a month ago it was exactly a month ago uh, it was a virtual show which means i was talking to shop owners from the comfort of my own home which is fantastic except it means they are not carrying away with them all of the products they want to purchase it means that they have to have their products shipped which is a massive undertaking it happened with the first expo, which happened um, last year. And again, in this expo, I underestimate the time and the energy and everything that goes into shipping so many voluminous orders for which I am eternally grateful. It's just, it's a big job. So while you think that you have reached the end, you have shared your product, you are now selling your product. It is far from the end. There is so much work to be done. And this expo happened to butt up right with this teaching event, the cross stitch, extra, cross stitch extravaganza that I did in Lee Summit, Missouri. Um, <clears throat> right on cue, some sirens. Uh, it butted right up to that event. There was, I think, uh, nine days between. So it was hustle, hustle, bustle, 
Um, Joe helped me tremendously. We got it all done and I was able to take off for the retreat knowing that all my packages were out, thankfully. So that happened mid-September. I boarded a plane and I went off to teach my very first cross stitch class ever to 100 amazing ladies who joined me at the Quilter Station Cross Stitch Extravaganza Retreat in Leesham, Missouri. Quilter Station is a quilting shop, an amazing, award-winning, like top three in the country quilting shop owned by Rita, who hosted this cross stitch event and did a phenomenal job. She took care of everything, made sure everybody had a great time. It was so much fun. Um, now I went into this very, very nervous because this is where I am all day. It's, it's me and Joe. Um, I, I talk to my friends online. I do floss two videos, but here I am by, by myself. Um, I'm an introvert through and through, I guess. Maybe things are changing. I don't know because I had a blast at this event, but it was different than I'm used to. I am not used to having many eyes on me and I was nervous to say the least. Now, thankfully, I was the very first teacher of the weekend. There were four teachers that I cannot believe that I was in the company of. I taught first on Friday, followed by Chessie and me, who was owned and um, who was owned by Linda Lockenschlager, who taught in the afternoon. Then on Saturday, Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery taught, followed by Alma Allen of Blackbird Design. Like those are some teachers, are they not? I cannot believe I was in their company. And um, the weekend, it just it went so well. But I was very, very happy to um, wrap up my class and I could just feel like a, ah, like no worries now. Now it is just socializing with my friends because like I said, there were a hundred talented, wonderful women there who made me feel welcome. And I tell you, as soon as I got up there to present my presentation that I had gone over no less than 20 times in my head, I was like, what were you worried about, Liz? What did you think would happen? All of the worst case scenarios that I had put in my head are actually crazy because cross stitchers are so kind. I don't know what I was worried about, what I was thinking. Everybody just really welcomed me and encouraged me and it went better than I could have imagined. Of course, of course there are things I feel like I forgot or should have gone over better or forgot to say or I want to do differently next time but that's okay because it went well and people asked questions and the feedback I got was that it was just fine so hopefully you have seen some things on social media by now I do have my class project here that I want to go over with you not in full detail because I want to save that for the class attendees but I want to show you what I did um, and kind of share with you the inspiration and inspiration and where it came from so I guess let's let's go ahead and do that now so as I said I taught first thing in the morning and I'm not going to give you the full kit breakdown and show you everything that all the participants got but I will show you um, what my project was and it was based entirely on this antique sampler again you may have seen it by now it is the Martha Padfield Pink Cottage School Sampler that I purchased from England and absolutely adore. I just love it. I was instantly drawn to all the motifs that little 12 year old Martha chose to stitch and include in her sampler. The birds, the butterflies, the flower baskets, and of course the Pink Cottage School at the bottom. Can you see it there? The Pink School and the text that says Pink Cottage School sold me. Like I couldn't scoop this up fast enough when I saw that. So this is the piece that I chose to share with everybody at the retreat and that inspired the project I made. 
So everybody there did receive a copy of this pattern, which to answer one of the questions I have gotten repeatedly, this is gonna be available for everybody. It is going to be released at Market 2022. That is March 2022. So you'll be able to get it there. And at that time, when I do release it to the general public, I will go through all of the research I did and what I found about Martha and her family. But for now, uh, I will just leave you with this eye candy, which you can read and look forward to. So, what I wanted for attendees of the retreat was for them to walk away with something, to have a token, something to remember the event by. And this certainly is not something that you can stitch quickly at all. So this was the inspiration for the make and take that I presented. And I am now going to present it to you. Let me get settled. As I said, I got through 20 minutes of this video earlier and then had that mishap. So let me get situated here. So the project was called the Pink Cottage School Motif Project. And what everybody ended up leaving with was a personalized, individual, different, per the maker hoop that was inspired by Martha, the time period in which she lived and the motifs that she chose to stitch in her piece. Martha lived in, um, she was 12 in 1852, which was the Victorian era in England. And she chose very Victorian motifs, the birds, the baskets, the butterflies. And that's what I wanted to pull into this project. So take a peek here. What you see is that every single one of these four different embroidery hoop projects has the same pink cottage, trees, grass, and border at the bottom. And that is because what I provided to each of the participants was this piece of fabric. Sorry, you can kind of see through it because this is cotton. This is not a cross stitched piece. What I did was stitch the pink cottage school and tree landscape scene of Martha's sampler I stitched it and then had it printed on cotton fabric. I took a picture of it and printed it on cotton fabric. So this, this is cotton, but it has an image of my cross stitched piece, which I shared with you here on Floss Tube months ago now. And I said, you'll see this again. Well, voila, here it is. That is what I turned it into. It's just that bottom portion of Martha's sampler and Everybody took this piece, put it in a hoop, and then used two other items that I included in their kits to complete their piece. Those two other items are these pieces of cotton fabric on which I printed Victorian scrap images. Victorian scrap is uh, something that was trendy when Martha lived and they were pieces of paper that were used to embellish anything. Oftentimes it was autograph books or photo albums or anything. The Victorian era was about more and lavishness. So um, that's what these were printed from, is pieces of paper from the Victorian era. The reason I chose birds and butterflies is because that's what Martha chose to include on her sampler. So every attendee got one of each of these and they were able to cut out the birds and the butterflies and whatever motifs they wanted and include them on their pink cottage school hoop project, I guess you could say. So you can see each one of these four are different. This includes some birds. This one had butterflies that were um, attached with simple embroidery stitches and embellished. All of their antennas are embellished. You can see I also did some embroidering of my initials. 
some embellishment. Then I went over all of this in the class um, more thoroughly, but I just wanted to show you what the project was. So everybody made their own hoops that they could take home with them to remember this really fun event and commemorate the Quilter Station retreat. So as I said, they got far more information than I'm giving now. In the future, if you would like to know more about what I did, um, I am happy to share that with you. This is the back of one of the hoops. I made sure that that was also taken care of. So this is actually a piece of paper. Um, I suggested people write their names or any details they wanted to write about the retreat and then it's sealed up in there for a make and take that is ready to be hung, to be put on the shelf, to be a little souvenir from the trip. And I am so impressed with what people did. Oh my gosh, the creativity in that room, the things that people did with their hoops, how they chose to finish it, it was incredible. Um, I will try to find some of those images on Instagram and put them there if you follow me. I would love to share them with you because the talent in that room was next level. This retreat was really, really quite special. I think I had been f familiar with many, many people who attended. It was a very it was a retreat full of people who are active on social media or have floss tube channels. So I should be able to find some of their projects to share with you. Um, it was just, it was, it was so great. I know I'm repeating myself a million times now, but the retreat was just wonderful. And I do believe that everybody was pleased with my project, which is just such a sigh of relief. And I know that everybody loved the antique piece. So I brought that so everybody could take a peek at it and just admire sweet Martha, 12 year old Martha's work. She stitches better than I ever will, has more patience than I ever will. Can you imagine being 12 and making that piece? But I think that these were a hit. Um, and that everybody enjoyed making them. And it was just great because it was a a project that people were able to chit chat and catch up with people because that's half the fun of the retreat. And some people didn't even start on their pieces while they were there. I did include all the supplies needed as well as instructions on how to complete the piece and said, if you're not into this right now, take it home, do it at your own leisure, 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 in your own time, whenever you can enjoy it. Um, so I made sure that everything was included and I, um, I'm just so thrilled with what people did, what people made, and the pieces that they went home with. So thank you to everybody who attended, who made me feel like I could do it, like I could get up there and talk in front of everybody. You guys made me feel welcome and wonderful, and I will forever be thankful for that. This retreat, the Cross Stitch Extravaganza, is written on this bag over here because I keep calling it the Quilter Station Retreat, but it is actually the Cross Stitch Extravaganza Retreat. Like, it set the bar high. Everything was just top notch. And um, I am I'm so looking forward to more retreats and getting together and seeing smiling faces and just being with my people, you know? And so it was it was really great and as I said before or in the previous video I recorded as soon as I boarded the plane to come home while I was tired I wanted to do it all again I did not get nearly nearly enough time with everybody to chit chat um, I, I want to do it all again and I have a feeling that's how you feel at the end of every single retreat you attend. I have been to StitchCon and this was my second retreat and I felt the same way at both events. So I think it's just part of it. You know, you always wanna be with your people. So I did wanna just reiterate one more time that if you are interested in Martha's sampler, the Pink Cottage School sampler, that reproduction will be out in March at Market and you can get it for yourself. Okay. I think that brings me, wow, you guys, the haul portion of this video, I'll let you know when I'm going to start on that because 
I got so much stuff at Quilter Station and um, I'm excited to share it with you, but I know it might not be for everybody, so I will give you a heads up on that. But why don't we get into the cross stitching whips because I have them portion of this video. Real quick, I did wanna let you know, I have the My Home in the Garden chart in front of me as a reminder, but I unfortunately have to let you know about an error on some charts, I know that sounds weird. It's not every chart. And the explanation for that is because um, it's my computer's fault, really. On some charts that have gone out, the computer, I guess when it opens the file for me to print more of the back pages, the thread list, it changes the symbol. Some of them are completely fine. Some of them are not. If you happen to be stitching this and you come across an error um i do apologize and i'm i i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i try to check that stuff i will do better and check better next time there is a corrected back page to my home in the garden on my website right now um, if you happen to have the thread list with the fifth symbol down being an x that X should be a sun symbol, and it is the DMC color 3053, the Gloriana color blue spruce light. That has the wrong symbol, and again, you can print a corrected back page on my website, which is hellofromlizmatthews.com. There is a tab at the top that says corrections. Womp, womp, womp. All right. Do I dare try to pause this video so I can close the blind, which is about to just start blinding me for the for the light? Sit tight. I'm not willing to risk it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Didn't want that to happen again. Also, I got this wheel like this rolling cart which is fantastic and I highly recommend it. it's three tiers and I've got like my whips my sweet happy mail like all the things in there and it's working out perfectly okay so let's talk stitching I have two whips for you first whip in this bag that my friend Steph gifted me which is so pretty it is from stitching the high notes my whip is the pink cottage school piece you guys have seen this before but I am back to it because let's be real I didn't stitch more than the little portion I needed to print on the fabric for the class um, but I am back to it you can see I've made some additions it was only like this previously but as I said did I say in this video or was it another it was the one that got cut off I hadn't stitched for a month you guys a month of just busyness of wanting to put needles to linen so badly but it wasn't what I needed to do at the time I needed to print charts I needed to get ready for my class I needed to fill orders a month is too long I don't know about you I would imagine it's the case for you too, but stitching is such therapy and it's so calming and it's just, oh, it just needs to be part of my everyday. So I got back to it after a month and I am so happy to be stitching again. You can see the progress I am making. I added that butterfly, half of this butterfly, and I'm starting to work up the borders. Now here's something funny with this. I stitched this section with two strands of th thread over two threads of linen because I really wanted thick coverage knowing that I was going to take this portion and have it printed on linen. I didn't want any sparseness. I wanted it to be very full coverage, but it's really full coverage. This is 36 count linen, so it's two strands of NPI silk over two threads of linen and it's really thick so I have made the decision because I am going through silk 
at record pace. And silk is not cheap, as you all know. I have made the decision to switch to doing one strand of thread over two threads of linen. So the plan is to finish both butterflies with the two strands, because that's how I started them. And then I am switching to one strand. And I really went back on back and forth on that. It's what I wanted to do, but I was like, oh, I can't switch. Like, you can't switch halfway through, but it turns out there's no rules in cross stitch. <laughs> and I also think when it comes to a reproduction sampler, you know, antique samplers are full of quirks and like, why did this happen? What was she thinking? Like all of those things. So I think that in the reproduction, it will only enhance the antique look, don't you think? So what did I do? All right, so this leaf is one over two, while the rest is two over two. It's not that obvious, right? Like, it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be just fine. And that's what I'm doing, because this is a big old piece, and that is a lot of NPI, and it just is way easier. So that is one of my whips. You, I am so excited that I will be able to share this with you as I progress on it. I was gonna say you'll see it as it moves along, which isn't always the case for my pieces. You know I don't always share designs that I'm gonna release in progress, but for this one, I will, and I'm very happy about that. So that's one whip. And then I also started another one. This is my Stitchy Notions by Lisa bag. She's so good. She's so good. Um, and what I have in here is Mare's Prairie Schooler Santa for this year. Again, if you are new here, I am stitching one Santa a year for my stepmom. I have done two so far except the second one I still have because of framing. I'm so sorry, Mare. But I figured as long as I get this to her in time to decorate this year for the holidays, it will be just fine. This is not permanently mounted in here. It's just floating. But you can see I have the frame. I just need to finish it. So this was last year's Santa. And this year's Santa is the Prairie Schooler 19... 94 Santa. He has sunflowers and I thought this was perfect. Um, Mare and I have traveled in Italy before and I have pictures of she and I, you know, very uh, like Italian. You can probably see it in your mind. The fields of sunflowers that are just on the side of the road. Amazingly. So I have pictures of she and I like in these massive fields of sunflowers and I thought if that could remind her of that it's a good thing so this is my progress so far this I am doing two two over two on 36 count cafe Kona linen from R&R &R. And that is my progress so far. I am obviously using DMC threads. All prairie schoolers are charted in DMC threads. This linen is just lovely to stitch with. And it has a smell that takes me back to my childhood. All R&R &R linen has a very like hand, I consider it like a hand dyed coffee smell. It's just R&R &R and it smells so good. So, so many memories when I pull this out and stitch on it and it's stitching up beautifully. So that is something that I will finish by December, I promise, and actually get framed. Um, I'll do two at once. So that, those, I should say, have been my whips for the last month. I have gotten a question. I put up a question box in my Instagram saying, I'm going to film this floss tube today. What can I answer for you? And I have those written down. It's the only thing I have written down notes wise or, you know, to be helpful through this video. But someone said, am I putting out more designs this year? And that has been on my mind a lot lately. The original plan 
was to put out more designs in November, but the workload that I have been carrying and what I have had on my plate has been too much. It's it's too much. So I have decided to put off any new designs until the new year. And to be more specific, it is until market of, of next year. So March, 2022, you can expect quite a few new designs from me. And I am, I'm excited to design without pressure if you know what I mean. I am not somebody, we've talked about this before, who works way in advance of things. I am like, oh, what do I need to do next? Design it, stitch it, and it's released. So I am really, really trying to switch gears and work in the opposite way. So I am excited to have some dedicated time to design things with um, a cushion. I think it will be very different. So very long answer to the question, will there be more designs out this year? No, there will not. It will not be until March of 2022 at market. But you better believe I will be stitching. It is not going to be a stitch free couple of months. I have fabulous model stitchers who I will ask to help me. By the way, my most the model stitcher who has stitched the most for me, Stacey Walker, actually lives not far outside of Lee Summit, Missouri. So I got to meet her and hang out with her at the retreat, which was wonderful. She is so, so kind. She, it was just great to hang out with her. Um, so I will be calling on her to help me get ready for market this year for sure. But that was just a, such a nice surprise. So. Where do I want to go from here? That's my stitching. How do I do a floss tube video again? I can't remember. Man, I need to do this more often, you guys. I'm so sorry. Let's, um, let me share with you some happiness, some happy mail, some kindness that has been sent my way. This is from Creative Keeps Studio. Sherry, who I met at the retreat, this is her and we were chatting i loved chatting with her and her friends um her friend is susan who made the project bags that i shared in a cup i got the project bags at stitchcon and i shared them in my video well they are friends and it turns out sherry was also a maker and she sent this to me in an extra long size if you're not familiar with what these are they are used for wrapping thread and then cutting to have perfect cut lengths and I told her that I use long pieces of thread um, probably longer than I should so she sent me this awesome thread winder I'm actually not exactly sure what this product is called, but I know that I will use it to cut my extra long pieces of thread. Thank you so much. I, it was so nice to meet you and I appreciate this very much. So I got that piece of happy mail. And then you guys know how I feel about candles, right? Especially this time of year when things are getting chilly and like you just want to be cozy and comfy. Well, Marilyn, who owns Cranberry Bog Cottage, which is a cross stitch shop in Terry Hute, Indiana. I always want to say Illinois, but I think that's actually Indiana. She and her daughter um, are both creatives. Marilyn runs the cross stitch shop and her daughter runs the company Wax Poetic out of the same location, I believe, and they make the best candles. So she very kindly sent this to me um, a while ago now and I have been saving it because I wanted to share it with you and recommend it. Their candles burn beautifully. They smell amazing. This one is called Hashtag All The Things and it has the scent of pumpkin, persimmon, and spice. And this is everything fall that you want your house to smell like. So this is going right over there to burn. It just, it smells so good. Marilyn, thank you so much for being so kind and wonderful and a part of this community. I appreciate it so much. And if you guys recall, speaking of community, um, 
August was the Common Threaded Stitcher month and I was part of the Common Threaded Stitcher team this year. It is hosted by Kia B Quilting and it is a month of Instagram prompts that, you know, pull experiences and information from you about like your favorite stitching tools, uh, recipes, anything like that. It's, it's mainly cross-stitch based, but you also get to share some of your personality with everybody. Wow, I explained that so badly. So badly. Um, chances are you are familiar with what Common Threaded Stitcher is and you participated because so many people joined us this year. It was really, really fabulous. And one of the prompts, I'm so sorry, that was the worst description ever. One of the prompts for one of the days was it asked you what your unicorn unicorn chart was or your most desired chart or the chart you would most like to stitch and that was one of my most favorite days prompts to read just to see what everybody wants and what they would love to stitch if they could get their hands on the chart well i shared two prairie schooler charts that i wanted because you guys know i am a prairie schooler addict especially and really particularly their old cardstock charts which are kind of glossy and heavy and they're out of print now they prairie schooler charts are being reprinted by hoffman distributing but they are printed on regular weight paper so these cardstock patterns are harder to find and that's what i mean when i say they are out of stock well I love Prairie Schooler charts and there were two that I really, really wanted and it is Garden Verses and Garden Samplers, both garden themed. Go figure, you know me. I have been obsessed with my garden which is winding down sadly for the year but it brought me so much joy for the months that it was flourishing and blooming. So anyway, I really, really wanted these two charts. and. I posted that the day that Common Thread and Stitcher asked, and lo and behold, my friend Suzanne, who is a local stitcher we've gotten together in the past, we've met at our LNS, um, happened to have both of them in her stash, and she was kind enough to pass them along to me. Um, thank you so much, Suzanne. Prairie Schooler is actually how we got to know each other and how we met, so, I am so happy to have these in my collection and more than I'm happy to have these in my collection, I'm happy to know you, Suzanne. Thank you so much. She hand delivered these to me in this packaging. Look at this. Suzanne is not only a stitcher, but she is a paper artist and like, ugh, how kind and it says hello down there. She has made me some of the most beautiful handmade cards. This is what accompanied the charts. And she came over, we had a glass of wine, just chatted, and she shared this happiness with me. And it just, it makes me so happy. Suzanne, thank you. I also received, way before I met Stacy at the retreat, um, when Stacy, my model teacher, sent me back a model, she included these stickers for me because she knows me. How great are these? I love how vintagey, gardeny, Victorian, like Martha Sampler, these are. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you so much. I just love them. They're going in my book of days now that I've had a chance to share them with everybody. I was also sent you guys, <laughs> I love this. Any other Schitt's Creek fans out there? I know, I know there are. Well, one day, Amazon delivered this package to me and I knew, I knew immediately when I opened it who this was from. The one and only Kia B Quilting. She, Steph and I <laughs> talked Schitt's Creek so much. She knows how much I love it and it is a coloring book. Whoops. Here's a little gift message from her. Um, it's a coloring book with all Schitt's Creek quotes and I just love it. 
I would have to say my favorite my favorite character is David um I I'm going to stop myself. I want to flip through here and read every one of the quotes and laugh with you, but I am going to stop myself, but recommend that you check this out on Amazon if you are a Schitt's Creek fan as well. Thank you so much, Kia. I also got from my Schitt's Creek fan club member, Steph, the Cricut Collection chart. A sweet friendship and the reason she sent this to me is because she Kia and I so Steph Kia and I are going to do a round robin of this piece I think that's what it's called right um, there are three girls here there are three of us so we are going to round robin this sampler stitching ourselves on each other's piece am I saying that correctly um, so basically Steph, Key, and I will each start our own piece and stitch ourselves in the middle, then send it on to one of us. We'll stitch, they will stitch themselves to one side, send it on to the last person, and they will stitch themselves on the other side. That is a round robin, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> they had to explain it to me a couple times, but I got there clearly um so this is the piece that we are all stitching from we will of course make adaptations and make it our own none of us really wear pigtails so you know we'll make them each other ourselves we'll make them ourselves for each other out of practice as i said so steph sent that to us and um i think the first swap is going to happen in January. So this is another piece that you will see me working on. I will share it in my whip moving forward. Okay. Lastly, I was gifted. It isn't really the right section for this if we're doing sections. Um, but Sweet Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery, who took me under her wing and helped me so, so much at the retreat in Quilter Station. I would have been lost without her, you guys. She was, she was just wonderful. And um, at the end, she gave me a piece of this fabric because she loves it so much and I have never used it before and said, you need to use this. So this is graham cracker fabric from Shakespeare's Peddler. Her son, oh, I'm sorry about the light shining through. Teresa Vanette, who owns Shakespeare's Peddler, her son Graham is in the dyeing business. And uh, Beth said she absolutely love, loves what he does. And uh, yes, I can see why. Look at this. This is beautiful. So Beth was sweet enough to give me a piece of linen to try out. It's gorgeous. I will find out from Beth what this colorway is called and put it in the description below but it's beautiful so i am very interested in getting my hands on some more graham cracker fabric um if you have tried it please let me know what you like this was the fabric that beth included in all of her kits for the retreat so everybody got a piece of this and is stitching on it now so I am really, really excited to try this gorgeous linen. Thank you, Beth. And oh, more. You guys have showered me with kindness lately. Um, this was sent to me a while ago. I guess I, I haven't done a floss tube catch-up video since. But as you know, one of my recent releases for Expo was called After the Rain. And for that piece, I worked with several people with the, people within the community to come up with color palettes that that piece could be stitched in. And one of the people who was kind enough to work with me is Ymir of Almond m and Now you've seen Ymir on social media on FlossTube before. She has her own channel, link below. And she is the most amazing stitcher. She does everything over one in very high count fabrics and it all looked phenomenal. I got to meet Ymir at StitchCon. She was one of my table mates and I just loved chatting with her, seeing what she was working on. She is one 
busy, busy lady and I was just happy to get to meet her and I'm happy to know her now. Well, she is somebody who agreed to work with me for the After the Rain collaboration. And on top of being an amazing stitcher, Yamir is also a silk dyer. So she dyes her own threads, which she did for the After the Rain collaboration. And when she sent me the silks that she dyed specifically for that collaboration, which you can order from her website, by the way, um, she also sent me a collection of other colors she has available and I just wanted to share them with you because they are gorgeous. Uh, not only is the color palette gorgeous, but her packaging is just lovely. Like you almost don't want to unwrap them. So all of these are available on her website. I don't want to tilt this too far um, for fear that it falls, but this was the best display option I had. And I just think they are stunning. There are so many colors on here that I am dying to use, like Bluebell. Ooh, where is the camera? Look at that. Oh, so pretty. And I specifically want to call out this collection of threads. Let me, um, I'm going to put this down and hold them up for you. This was the collection that Ymir released while we were at StitchCon. I don't think she sleeps, to be honest. She is so busy and so talented. But what's so special about this collection of threads is they are based on skin tones. Let's see, how can I do this so you can best see them? Because I really want you to see them. Look how stunning these threads are. They are absolutely gorgeous. And I remember at StitchCon, she was like, do you want to see something? And she pulled them out and I was like, there are no words. So these colors, again, are all based on skin tones and their names, they're not names, they are dates that are important in black history. So for instance, this thread, I'm gonna go through all of these because I think you need to see these because they are so gorgeous. This is 2021. We are here today talking about inclusivity and representation. So that's 2021, if you like that color. This is 1859. And this date is the last known slave ship to arrive in the United States. Look at, I'm sorry, I am not doing these threads justice. This is 1965, Bloody Sunday and Voting Rights Act. This is 1900, Black National Anthem was created. That color, all of these colors are just, they're beautiful. Um, 1873, first open heart surgery was performed by a black doctor. Look at that. This palette is something else. 1866, the Civil Rights Act. Aren't they gorgeous? So Ymir, thank you not only for gifting me with these gorgeous threads, but for putting something out for our community to have that um, is, is so important. They're gorgeous. So I just wanted to share all of those with you. With that, oh my gosh, you guys, more things, more things. Let me share with you the purchases I, um, I'm gonna do an abridged version of the purchases I made. Um, just to keep this on the shorter side, I of course got the new sticker book. This is from the publishers that put out the Antiquarian sticker book, which like sent me down the sticker rabbit hole. More on that later. Where are, we're at 48 minutes, okay. I got a lot more to show you. Um, but this book is awesome. Awesome. I got it from Amazon. Um, it is called Bibliophilia. So I wasn't exactly sure what the subject matter was going to be. Um, it turns out they are kind of antique inspired stickers, but there's a lot more letters. <laughs> Basically, that's what I gathered. There's a lot more text, but it's really, really good. I think it's like 20 bucks or under. Perfect for your book of days, which 
is coming out soon. Um, you know I can't wait to get my hands on it. And I think this pair is perfectly with it. So go ahead, add that to your cart and sticker away. Okay, that's all I'm gonna share with you from the things that I purchased. I want to share with you my haul <laughs> from the Quilter Station Retreat. Okay, I'm gonna clear some space. I'm gonna take a drink. I apologize for doing that on screen, but I've been talking a lot. Okay, and then we're gonna get into what I purchased at the retreat. Okay, thank you, I needed that. First of all, every retreat attendee received this awesome canvas tote bag that we all filled up. Um, and it says Cross Stitch Extravaganza 2021 Quilter Station down here. Again, they hosted the retreat. And inside, this bag is so good. Like what a great retreat um, swag. Inside, everybody got this fabric handmade pouch, adorable, as well as this wooden card that has a piece of wool on it, which is a needle holder. So that was what every attendee had waiting for them. And one of the first things I did, actually, the first thing that happened when Rita, who owns Quilter Station, picked Beth and I up at the airport. I feel like I am leaving off so many things about this retreat, but I could talk to you forever. There are so many stories I could tell you and things I could tell you about the event, but oh, we're just gonna go with what I, what I have already shared. Anyway, when Rita picked us up from the airport, Beth and I went we checked into our hotel and then she took us to the shop because we were anxious to see the shop. And it is, it's crazy. I am not a quilter yet, um, but you walk in and the, the supply, the inventory is, it is a big shop and I can see why it is like top three in the country. It is so inspiring and magical and course I got things. I had been wanting to take up cross stitch. Uh, no, take up quilting for a while. And I feel like now that it's getting a little chillier and fall is coming, now is the time, don't you think? And then being at that store, I was like, I'll get it. <laughs> Add it to cart. I'll get it. So I was lucky enough to make two trips to the quilter station shop one when we first arrived and that was really more like a get your bearings see what they have see what you think you're gonna want and then the second trip was when my model sister stacy came and we spent some time together she and i went back to the shop and that's when i was really like put in the cart put in the cart stacy was so patient and just let me shop around and um i was just so happy to be back there again so this is what I ended up purchasing throughout those two trips to Filter Station. I got some fabric. I only got three different, three different patterns and I did not purchase them. Oh, that's already a lie. There's more fabric in that bag. These are the pieces of fabric that I had cut off the bolt, I should say. And while I didn't, necessarily intend them to go together. When I stack them, I was like, okay, they do go together. So this is a French general fabric that I just love. I love all things French general. So I had to get that. I'm sorry. I don't know the makers of any of these other patterns, but I will put them in the description box. I got this. The lighting is not the best, but it is like, um, a dark, gray green and they kind of go together and then lastly oh this is by miss mrs march's collection i got this fabric which is like uh 
um, like seed packs and vintage ephemera. And don't they all work well together? Unbeknownst to me as I was picking them out. I just think this is so cool. It's, I love that it's kind of, um, I was going to say abstract, but it's almost more impressionist. Just love that. So that's the fabric off the bolt that I got. And then let's see. Okay. Paper piecing, English paper piecing is what I am dying to try. I have done some quilting. I actually took a college class my senior year last semester. It was a Friday 9 a.m. class, so you know I really wanted to take it if I was getting up at that time. And it was a great class. Like anything fiber, textile, make with your hands, I am all about. So I do have a slight history background in quilting, but I have never tried paper piecing. Um, and that's what I want to give a go to. So I just got some hexes paper hexi down with the lingo um at quilter station they had some they had models of course and these were some models that were sitting on the counter and this is not my style this is not something i will ever make i am not into fruit and vegetable pot holders but the technique that was used to make those is something called chenille the staff at Quilter Station were kind enough to give me some pointers and to kind of tell me what I was looking at, but I am very intrigued in this. Intrigued by this, I should say. Um, so I purchased this pattern book because I would like to learn and I didn't want to forget. It's so textural and vintage looking and worn and I just, oh, I want to know more. So I bought that to remind myself. Here's the other fabric I got. Uh, Beth also picked up some fabric from this line. So we are uh, fabric twins. This is Marilyn by Kathy Schmidt. So I'll put it in the box below. I think this is called a charm pack. And I only know that because it's on the back of the thing. This is a charm pack. So this would be great for just getting back into quilting. I could just do a solid square quilt quilt real quick bust that out you know like you do a handmade quilt okay what's down here um i got a erasable marker i think this erases by heat these are impulse at the cash register purchases i got a micron pen and full disclosure i got this for my sticker journaling these are the perfect pens for that. So I even brought my sticker journal to the quilter station retreat because Steph was there and she was like, can you bring it so I can see it? And I said, gladly. So um, I also purchased these applique needles. They are tulip needles. Um, and these are what I'm gonna use for my paper piecing. What else is in here? I got Take these out. I got these stork needles. They're kind of like wrought iron storks. I really like those. This is, I haven't even tried to cut with them. They seem very sharp. They seem like they're good. These are for photos, if I'm being honest, for staging photos. And what else is in here? Just a couple more things. I got Arafil number eight thread. Again, this is for paper piecing. It was recommended to me. Never tried it, and I'll give it a try. And I got a mini hex and more template. The brief research that I've done about English paper piecing, I think this is not what I should have purchased, but I did, so I have it. Um, I also, shoot, I purchased a book that I did not bring out here to show you what. Uh, I didn't bring the book out to show you what it is. The last thing I got from Quilter Station, is that true? Yep, the last thing I got is this 
pressing mat, a wool pressing mat. My friend Suzanne has told me about these before and said they're fantastic. So I saw that there and I took the plunge. I haven't used it yet. It'll go downstairs after this video is over, but I'm very excited to have this. Everybody I talked to in shop um, said it's really, really good. That's what I got there. And then, um, look at this cool bag. Quilter Station reusable bag. That's everything that I purchased from the Quilter Station shop. Wish me luck on my quilting. I look forward to having time to try that. And I will, of course, keep you posted. Um, I'm very, very excited about it. When the retreat was over, after everybody had gone home, Beth and I uh, had a flight out on Sunday afternoon. So Rita, who was the most gracious host, picked us up and took us to some antique shops in Missouri, which were really, really, really good. I'm used to good antique shops here being in the, on the East Coast, particularly close to New England. We tend to have some good antiques. So I wasn't sure what to expect in um, the middle of the country. The shops were so good. And I purchased a couple of things that I thought I would just share with you. This is another instance of um, Beth Twist and I twinning. We found a booth that sold these hand dyed silk ribbons. And we were both like, picking they were in cubbies and we were just picking our colors we ended up with very different color palettes but uh both a color palette that's very beth and a color palette that's very liz so i got those and then i also found this book this is a series of books that were put out by um time life books you've seen them if you go antiquing or to any vintage shows or shops uh, this is what the binding looks like and it's probably a series of like 20 books on different subject matters one is needle art and I have that one but this one is on folk art and I just found it very inspiring so I decided to pick that up I paid um, eight dollars for it that seems to be the going rate for these books around here and like here's just one page I'm not going to show you all the pages it's all hand cut uh, hand cut paper so I got that and then check this guy out I thought he would be fantastic for photos a little hinged skeleton for next year when I put out Halloween <laughs> designs I just I thought he was great and he's vintage so he now lives here in Maryland and that was my haul from the antique stores around the quilter station shop now this is not the only thing that i have to share with you as far as things i have acquired um not only was i gifted all of this kind happy mail and not only did i purchase all of these things for myself but at the quilter station retreat you guys were so kind and shared so many happy and cheerful things with me and I just really quickly wanted to share with you some of the things that were given to me thankfully most people did put their names um, on the things that they gifted to me which I am so so grateful for this is from Ray look at this it's just a little bling needle minder a little blue bling needle minder let's see I'm gonna pull this stuff out you could see the pile that I'm swimming in. Sorry, there's more stuff. Okay. Um, as I said, I got to meet Stacy Walker, my model sister, and she was so kind. She brought for me this shirt, which I have not gotten to wear yet because I wanted to share it with you. Makes me think of her and it makes me smile. It's also super duper soft. Um, and then for Joe, she was so sweet and brought a whole bunch of barbecue stuff, uh, dry rubs, and then we also got some sauces. And she also included some chocolates, but they are long gone, Stacey. They did not last long at all. But thank you, thank you, thank you from both me and Joe. You did not have to do that, and it was just a 
pleasure to meet you. I also got, let's see, I haven't unwrapped any of this stuff because again, I wanted to share it. This was from Linny. It is a, I believe a crow shade, correct me if I'm wrong, flower. And then in here, she also, oh gosh, I can't get it open. This is a thread drop that says believe and she handmade these and then gave them out to all of the uh, attendees at the retreat. I have a little package here. And although I don't have a first name on here, this is from Quilt Knit 17. And she included the thread cards that are so popular right now. A spool of ribbon a DMC skein of thread and two little charms. Let me see if I can't get these out, which is so sweet. One, this is a little iron and a pair of scissors. That was so kind. I just love the whole like swap share thing and anybody who was willing to share with me. I really, really appreciate this is from Judy. This uh, is this a scissor fob? I guess it could be a scissor fob or go on a thread ring. Uh, she let me choose whatever bird I wanted. And of course I went with an owl. Thank you, Judy. And then I have a nice little stack of thread cards here. This is from Polly. I will for sure be using these. This is from Kay Dunlap. I love that little guy. And then this is from, this is from Ray as well. Okay. Um, and this is her great, her grandmother, not her great grandmother. Isn't that so sweet? I love how she personalized that. And then this was a gift. Please forgive me. I do not have your name. I remember talking to you several times at Quilter Station at the retreat and you gifted me with this awesome piece of antique history inside I have been waiting to take this off and I hate to take it off because I want to save this forever but inside this piece of ephemera check this out is the needle book I just love this I think this is so cool and the fact that you shared this with me I appreciate so much I can picture your sweet face and chatting with you please reach out to me so I can know your name and so that we can connect now and moving forward I was also gifted by Elizabeth Ann can stitch who I met at the retreat see there's so much I left out like I got to hang out with Steph and Liz and we just like got together in a hotel in one of our hotel rooms at night and just chatted and laughed and caught up and it was so wonderful oh i want to go back and do it all again but you guys know how talented elizabeth ann is and she made me this rifle paper company fabric <laughs> zipper pouch and i just love it i cannot believe she made this for me Liz, it was so nice getting to know you, and I hope it's the first of many visits together we have. She included this tin, and in it there are tapestry needles, and of course, Elizabeth Ann can stitch needle minder. Woo, that's going up on my collection. And she also included some thread in this pouch, but I am a Rifle Paper Company lover. Rifle, rifle Paper Company product card fabric lover. So this is extra special. Thank you so much, Liz. And then lastly, oh, you guys, I feel so spoiled, so spoiled. Um, as I was leaving, not only did Beth Twist give me that beautiful graham cracker fabric, she also gave me this little bag, which included some scissors. This is going in my stitchy notions bag right now and some chocolate from Seattle because Beth is from the West Coast and I again the chocolate is gone the chocolate does not last long around me but it was so good that I saved the wrapper so I could tell you about it and recommend it 
this was some of the best chocolate I've ever had. Is this even going to show up? Okay, it's not, but I'll read it to you. These are all from um, Seattle Chocolate, and it is San Juan Sea Salt in Milk Chocolate. And my most favorite ones, Pink Bubbly Chocolate, and it actually like fizzes in your mouth, as does the Champagne Chocolate. So good. I am so glad I don't see these regularly because I would buy them every single time. But if you come across any of the Seattle chocolate, champagne and pink bubbly chocolates, get them, enjoy them. Think of me, tell you where, tell me where you got them so I can get more and enjoy. Oh my gosh, you guys, I feel like that was just that was a lot of stuff I just talked to you about again and just like the retreat I feel like I left so many things out it was it was just such a great month and I am very happy to be connected with you again and to get to recount that last month I had and share those stories with you I hope that you are doing well if you are still here with me thank you so much for watching as I have said before, it's my hope to be back in less, in a shorter amount of time than this time. Um, I hope that we are catching up again soon. I hope that you have been well. Thank you for letting me share all of this with you. I am happy to see you again and find me on Instagram. We can connect there. It is hello from Liz Matthews. And until next time, over and out, take care.